All right, good evening. We'll call to order this uh, meeting of the Committee of the Whole, this holiday uh, gathering. Uh, please call the roll. Bourne, here. Bow, here. Decker, here. Gesha, here. Hannah's here. Heidemann, here. Kittleson, here. Bionis, Meyer, Montemore, here. Brinfleisch, Ryan, here. Sark, here. Vanderweel, for Hassel, Wangaman. And I did hear from all the person, Clionis, uh, that, so she's excused. The others I had not heard from. Yeah, but he told you that and I said she could. Oh, that, and I've heard from uh, Alderman Meyer, and Alderman Reinfleisch told me he might be a little late, so I, I correct that statement. We have uh, 12 present. Uh, we have a quorum. Okay, a quorum is present. We'll continue with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, moving to item four, I entertain an approval of the minutes from the committee of the whole meeting of October 27, 2008. Under discussion. Any changes to those minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Approval passes. Item five, the uh, housekeeping, filing of uh, four documents that had been passed to us previously. I entertain a motion to file. So moved. Second. Uh, motion and file under discussion. I heard a beep. No lights. People's attracted. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Under, docu under B, document number uh, RO80809, Council Document 636, a spreadsheet entitled Effect on Budget on Property Tax Based on Assessed Value. Uh, the City Assessor was kind enough to prepare this for me earlier in the year. Uh, at one time, we were projecting possibly up to a, stru a structural deficit in the budget of up to $1.7 million. And I had uh, Mr. Lutsky prepare this spreadsheet on the effects of various uh, potential deficits and on the, on the uh, effect it would have on uh, property taxes based on values of certain homes. As it turned out, uh, the spreadsheet was kind of a moot point because we ended up balancing the budget as we go forward. But I do intend as we go forward into 2009 having uh, Mr. Lutsky prepare another spreadsheet uh, as we go forward with the two, two, 2009 budget in case uh, if hopefully there will be no budget deficit for 2010. But, but if it is, this spreadsheet would be very handy in alerting our constituents as to what a potential increase in property taxes would be. And on the other hand, the numbers also work in reverse uh, if we have a uh, corresponding reduction in, in the levy, this chart works that way also. So I am going to have this prepared for next year, but right now it's kind of a moot point. So I support filing it. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Uh, and also, I think at the time, didn't we talk about asking the IT department to put a calculator on the website so people could be uh, clued into that too? Okay, great. Thank you. Any more discussion? Hearing none, uh, under the motion to file those four documents, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Moving on to item six, discussion of possible action on resolution 158-08-09, council document 1640, a resolution creating a temporary government structure committee to collect data, study and make recommendations to the common council as to the economic and administrative feasibility of having a city manager or city administrator versus a full-time mayor and a corporate council versus a city attorney. I'm uh, person born. Thank you. Uh, I would like to make uh, an amendment to the document uh, as, as follows. Uh, be it further resolved, up on, up on the very top, be it further resolved uh, to have the Government Structure Committee present its report and recommendations to the Common Council 
on March 16th of 09 and have the Committee of the Whole meet to consider the report and recommendations of the committee on March 23rd, 09 or March 30th, 09 and make a recommendation to the, to the Common Council for possible action on April 6th, uh, 2009. And then under the, starting with, this, with the second, be it further resolved, that the committee shall be compromised of seven members to be appointed by this resolution and confirmed by the Common Council. The membership shall consist of the following. Alderperson Joseph Heidemann, Alderperson Eric Rindfleisch, Alderperson Jody Vanderweel, a member of the board of the Sheboygan Area Chamber of Commerce, a city resident appointed by the president of the chamber, a member of the Sheboygan Area School District, a city resident appointed by the school board president, the county board chairman or his designee, a city resident, and Mr. Jerry Jones, a city resident and local banker. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Alderman Gisha. Do we have to stand up? No, we don't have to stand up. Uh, just as you a, do. <laughs> do I have just to stand up? you? <laughs> All right, just me. Uh, just as a uh, uh, full disclosure, uh, Jerry Jones works for the company I work for. I don't work for Jerry. Jerry doesn't work for me. We're completely different areas. He serves on, uh, has served on past committees within the city, and uh, currently serves on Industrial Development Commission. Uh, mm -hmm currently and has been a life, uh, not a lifelong, but a, a very long time city resident. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Hartman for being here as well tonight. His, his letter was recently published in the, uh, in the Sheboygan Press about how the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance feels about this issue. Uh, this, is, this is an issue that you know, I've heard from several members. Does, it deserves to be looked into. We, we need more information. So that's what this, uh, that's what this committee, this government, uh, what are we calling it? Government Structure Committee will be doing, looking into two things. Uh, and uh, I just have a question. Thanks for being here tonight, uh, Attorney McLean. In order, if we were to want to vote on it April 6th, would it have to lie over? Would we have to introduce it to the council earlier than the schedule that uh, Alderman Bourne proposes? January 6th? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, he, we would want to vote on it April 6th as a council, the last meeting of this council. Would you need to do what? Would it need to lie over? If we, if we, as the Committee of the Whole, made a recommendation to ourselves, would that recommendation have to get into the packet and lie over for a time, or could it be voted on as soon as it appeared in the packet? Uh, I'm a little confused as to whether you're talking about the recommendation to adopt this resolution, or if you're talking about to adopt the report at the end of the, it, it, the report. Yes, at the end. I'm sorry, whatever the recommendation of that body is, if, if the Common Council wanted to vote on it the night of Monday, April 6th, would it have to be in the Council's packet, uh, or would it have to lie over for two weeks? Uh, the Council could suspend the rules, but it would need to be on the agenda. Okay. Okay. I know we try not to suspend the rules, but so w would it need to, need to lie over? Uh, you're talking about adopting the report from the study committee? Correct. C approving that, uh, approving the recommendations uh, and changing. The, from the committee of the whole. F f right. The, the, the government structure committee would make its recommendation to the committee of the whole. The committee of the whole would vote in some way either to recommend it or not recommend it. It would get to the common council and the common council would want to vote either to enact those recommendations or not. Um, for us to vote as a council, for us to vote on that Monday, April 6th, would it have to be in the packet four weeks prior, or two weeks prior? Two weeks prior. Well, as it's currently drafted, the committee would make its recommendations to the council, and then the council could, if they saw fit, to yeah. the mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Then it's gotta, but away. then it's got to get done even earlier. No, not doesn't have to. We no. just have the discussion at the common council. Oh, that's true. Alderman oh, Warren. Thank you. Uh, my uh, my amendment was to have the report and recommendations of the study committee to the council on March 16th at that council meeting. No, first, 
No, it goes to the council. I would have the I would have the report and recommendations go to the common council on this on the 16th. And then the Committee of the Whole would consider the report and recommendations on March 23rd or March 30th at the pleasure of the Chair, and then make a recommendation to the Common Council for possible action on April 6th. Now, as it just so happens, April, there, would be one more, there would be one more council meeting after April 6th of this council. Depending on how the elections fall, Sue will send that out. So 4-6 is not the actual last meeting of this council. There would be one more, but we could suspend the rules on the 6th and vote okay. on it if we wanted to. Okay. Okay, so we can, I was just trying so to think as far as. Is, that, is okay. that correct, Attorney McLean? Yes. This works. Okay. It, and just to be clear, is your amendment to send it to the Common Council and then the Committee of the Whole, or right to no, the Committee? No. He, he would just go to the Common Council. The Common Council would make the recommendation right. to go to right. the Committee of the Whole. Okay. Yeah, I'm, uh, my, uh, my amendment was that it goes to the Common Council on March 16th. Okay. And then to the committee, I'm assuming to then to the committee of the whole, either on the, the 23rd, 23rd or the 30th. Or the 30th. You can't, okay. You can't as, yeah, I think you've got to just drop it at going to the Common Council. But then the Common Council has to decide that to forward it. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Yeah. So. So I, would amend, so I would amend my amendment then that it would go to the Common Council on 316.09. Uh, and then we as a council could decide to either talk about it that night or refer it to the, co the committee of the whole? Correct. Okay, it's your I'll second your am friendly amendment, yes. Okay. Your second amendment is to remove that, com that committee of the, the whole. The whole language. That committee of the whole sentence. Okay. But we would, uh, Mr. Chairman, Please. but we would, want, we would want the common council on March 16th uh, well, we can, either, we can either discuss it that night or send it to the Committee of the Whole, but we want to take final action yet in this council year. Correct. Correct. That's the goal. That's okay. the goal. Alderman Gisha? Only because I've screwed this up myself. Just structurally, it, whatever recommendation would come out of this committee would need to then be structured in an ordinance change, I think. So in asking City, uh, City Attorney McLean if the report can come out, we, we won't act on a report in the council. Right. Somebody's going to have to sit down at an IBM Selectric and actually, if they choose to, make a resolution or ordinance change. And I think that's really the question. Does an ordinance change have to lie over that's so we can time that back? simultaneous to, to uh, this. And that would be done either theoretically by or not by one of the three aldermen involved or anybody on the council. Who would attach Who would then decide to actually do ordinance. the ordinance or resolution. And I think, yeah, the report of committee doesn't have to lie over, but if it's going to be in an ordinance form, it's completely a different right. question. I've screwed that up before. That's why okay. I'm And that's what that I was trying to make sure that we don't end up wanting to vote on it April 6th and legally not being able to. Right. And we will be fine. Please, Please. Attorney McLean. Can, this, can Attorney Mark. McLean step up because yeah, it, it's on TV? As far as ordinance changes, you know, if you get to that point, uh, it very well could require charter ordinance changes, uh, and there's special requirements for charter ordinances. That's not something you really want to rush through a charter ordinance change. Uh, for instance, if you went to a city manager form of government that requires a charter ordinance, uh, on the city attorney, uh, I guess now is probably a good time to bring this up. Uh, I think it's a semantic issue, but you have a corporate counsel versus city attorney. Technically, you would still have a city attorney. I think what you're looking at is whether you want an elected city attorney or an appointed city attorney. And if appointed, you want an in-house appointed full-time person, or do you want a, a contracted outside legal counsel? That's really what you should be directing the study committee to look at. So your recommendation for the wording on that is instead of and a corporate counsel versus a city attorney, would be and a hired, a contractual? Uh, yeah, an appointed or a contracted outside counsel to serve as city attorney versus? Uh, an elected city attorney. Right. Do we need a friendly amendment to that? Yes. And again, that also we'll would require that. a charter ordinance change. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and, and what are the requirements for that charter ordinance change? Yeah. 
how much in advance, and, and, and is He's that because it's in. such a big change, you want to be deliberative? Rules on a charter ordinance change, frankly. Uh, and once it's adopted, it doesn't go into effect for 60 days, and that uh, you have to publish that, and citizenry has a right to petition for a referendum on a charter ordinance change, mm -hmm. and it requires two-thirds vote on charter ordinances. The council. Oh, the council. I assume the, the timing, you're looking at doing whatever you're going to do with this council year, that's, that's what I think that's what the hope was. Now the question becomes, given, given what Attorney McLean just said, can we get all that done? You know, that would have to be done, I would think, by the end of February. In, order well, in terms of the 60 days, you're not going to meet that. You, you, you can get to the point where the council uh, we vote on the ordinance, the ordinance and the ordinance the 60, forces then that. Then the 60 days starts ticking. And a charter ordinance doesn't have to lie over any longer. It's just, there's no. No. Okay. Please, Alderman Bourne. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> is the charge of this. I want to sit closer. <laughs> yeah, is you're the, welcome to. I guess I have a question. Is the charge of the committee uh, going to be. Whether we whether we make a change in the uh, in both of the issues, either city manager or city administrator, or corporate counsel versus city attorney, is that going to be the charge of that committee to make that decision whether to do that? And if, if if the council passes that, then later would there be an implementation committee formed to actually do the nuts and bolts of what the salaries are going to be and that type of thing? Or what's you know how in depth is the initial committee going to be? Uh, and later, would there be an, uh, 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 a committee to implement? Alderman Ryan Fleck. Oh, thank you. Uh, I understand I joined a little bit late, so I missed some of the initial uh, discussions. My you were late, so we signed you up. <laughs> Very good. I saw that. Thank you. <laughs> My punishment. <laughs> um, I, uh, I have some concerns, I guess, with the time factor. Um, without perhaps looking political, either for the position of mayor, position of city attorney, but also for the position of people sitting in these seats right now, if we're trying to rush it before the next election, um, <clears throat> may give the appearance that decisions already been made. Uh, and I, I think something of this, this depth may need some more time, as we've seen, you know, the 60 days, possible referendum, you know, a tr option on that one as well. I think also you know, we have a, a lengthy list of people that have taken papers out for the position of mayor. Uh, with understanding that it's a four-year term, uh, and, and I think that we have to look seriously at: Do we do it mid-term of somebody uh, that that looks political? You know, regardless of whoever is sitting in the mayor's seat uh, starting next spring, uh, I, I'd be careful to avoid that as well, uh, I, I, and not to necessarily rush it and, and um, make mistakes that have to be corrected down the way as well. Uh, and then the final point I think would be: If we get too specific on the goals of the committee. Uh, once again, I think we've already made up our mind then, giving direction to, you know, this is exactly what you're going to look at. Uh, I think if we do a little more general language in there saying uh, to look at the, posi the position of mayor, look at the position of city attorney, are there other options that make more sense for city government, as well as perhaps looking at the whole city government as well, which is a bigger picture than I think maybe most people are looking at doing. But if we're going to do it, maybe it's the whole structure could be looking at and as uh, um, Vice President Bourne had said, it makes sense that if the committee is going to investigate, the committee probably also ha will investigate the, how to implement it if we give that committee time to do both. If there's a recommendation and these would be the implementations, if this is approved, then the council simply has to vote yes or no uh, on that picture. Uh, so I understand that the time constraint, I would like to get it done as fast as possible, but at the same time, I think you know, if we give a little more broad spectrum to the committee to look at all the options and the, the procedures of implementation, what would that mean uh, to the city? How it would look going from one phase to another phase uh, and a timeline for that, uh, I think would give the council, whoever is sitting in these seats, a better option to vote you know, yes or no, or go through the procedure of a referendum for the committee, for the city as well. They can see the full picture of what they're voting yes or no on if it goes to that point in time. Thank you. Thank you. All the person gives you. I, thank you. I, I tend to agree with Alderperson Reinflesch, uh, except to the point that I think this committee has the ability to do all that if they decide. They can, they can decide on setting an implementation and giving guidance on implementation or look at whatever they want 
regarding structure? I don't think it's that particularly sp specific, first of all, because there aren't that many options if you're going to change it. I, I think the committee has full power, unless I'm reading this wrong, to look at, look at this any way they want. Okay. Thank you, Alderman I guess one of the things I was thinking about with the timeline is, is that it keeps it clean uh, because Alderman uh, Heidemann and Alderman Runfleisch are up for election right now, and so if they, were, they might not be on the committee uh, if it extended past April, but if, uh, I'm sure there's a way to replace them if they, if they weren't. So that, <laughs> well, no, I'm just, because that's my only, my, my, my only, as an individual, my only interest, and I might not be there too, you and I, we can be working at Starbucks. Or, um, but I guess what I was thinking is, is that uh, we get it done, it, that way it doesn't linger. Uh, the committee meets and, and, and meets, uh, not to slow things down, it doesn't drag out, and the, the membership stays the same, but I guess that's maybe not as important as I was thinking it was. Um, uh, Alder Member Hassel, please. Thank you, Your Honor. I here, here, Mr. Chair, I do like the sense of urgency that, you know, the March 16th date puts out there. I mean, I guess one thing to keep in mind if anybody's concerned about the time frame is that it's coming to this council. This council could decide, hey, the information is too incomplete. We want you to go back. You know, so this isn't driving the decision, a yes or no decision on any given date. It's just saying come back to us with the best you can by March 16th. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and just to offer the flip side argument to what I had just said, would be the same time that if the committee does not feel it, it can do that, that duty as discharged, it can come back to me and say it's unable to do it by this point in time. Sure. But at least that there is a date then that says we can come back and say this is the information that we've gathered. We need more time to gather this information. The, committee, the, the council can decide what to do at that point in time. So there's a flip side to what I just said. So I, you know, I can go either way, I suppose. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Attorney McLean? Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. I was just going to say, as far as time constraints. Uh, there you go. As far as time constraints, uh, you know, the mayor is going to be elected and be in for four year term. So that won't, you won't change anything during that four years. Uh, and the city attorney position is got two more years. So as far, if you're looking to implement something uh, rapidly, I mean, that's not going to. Right. Not going to happen. I guess you're talking about coming up with a plan that to implement that would look forward to those to those, those dates. two dates. So it's it's a sense of urgency to gather information and get smart on it, but it's a bit of an artificial sense of urgency because nothing will happen at least for two years and then potentially four years after that. Okay, thank you, uh, Donna. If, yeah, if you'll come up to the mic and please make it, I thought you had a question, I'm sorry. If you can just make your question. The question it pertains to this, the two positions. I, I, uh, I was wondering, I can see that the study committee to study both, but they can vote up or down for either one. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily mean all or nothing. Right. Is that correct? So you're saying that the committee should certainly make two separate recommendations and so that they can absolutely i would think that that that, that the was committee my would question I, yeah. I was wondering why it was jumped and i also if the committee needs any of these or any of the aldermen this is that information that I, a lot of the aldermen had when we had the forums well, okay here you can feel it. free to, to if pass there, i know there's some new aldermen and if they'd like some otherwise yep, just also pass. if that committee wants any of this stuff and Names. Okay. I do have that. Okay. Thank you. And feel free to pass that out. Uh, Alderperson Kittleson, please. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess would the committee also want to be sure to to consult with our city attorney to make sure that everything is legally on the up and up and that they are doing the right thing, not that you come before the committee and, and we know that, you know, something isn't right. So I, I think our city attorney should be, you know, Maybe not if not included as in the committee ex as an ex officio. Uh, ex officio. I, or, I, I, I don't think so. No. no. I, be given the. But, you know, it, but at least. He's certainly available for consult on the process and legality for, okay. of the things they hope right. to achieve. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> only for speaking purposes, only for auditory purposes. Um, That's good. Is that. Thank you. Yes, that, that answers okay. it. Just, yeah. Any other discussion on the issue of Alderperson Bourne's 
amendment on date and timeline and the, the membership of the committee. So we're going to do a vote on that and then the resolution? Or include it in the resolution? I think you should include <coughs> one vote. Include vote on the amendment. amendment? Correct. Okay. Yep. And then we'll need a second amendment, or do you want to add to your amendment the, the wording and a con contracted outside counsel versus an elected city attorney? That's that would, earlier that would, in the that document. Would, that would be fine. Okay. Friendly amendment yes. on that? Okay. <laughs> Alderman Gishon. I can't resist. I hate to throw a monkey wrench into this. <laughs> but I, I, I have to admit that I, I have been giving some consideration as to adding what this committee thinks maybe of adding a couple of additional local residents or citizenry to this. I don't know what everybody thinks about that, but originally I thought there should be more citizens than, I know we have to keep an odd number, but if everybody's comfortable with the way it is, it was just a consideration. Do you have specifics? Well, I, I, I would like to, uh, up for discussion, adding two more citizens, and that would be, one would be uh, former Alderman Eldon Berg, and uh, Attorney David Gass to uh, uh, to this as a uh, it rounds it off to nine. It's a large committee, but it's a it, it's a pretty experienced committee. It, it's just a thought. Um, I'd like some feedback on. And uh, Alderman Verhassel had rung in first. Uh, sure, thank Berhassel. you, Mr. Chair. I had the same feelings when I talked to a few people before that how. We bring in some constituents, but I guess I was looking down the road more so of, <clears throat> excuse me, the rank and file constituent, somebody maybe not as a former alderman or, or, or a lawyer, banker, so, so to say, somebody from the rank and file that could just give us that ground level feedback. Um, but I do like the idea. I don't know how you'd go about that, though, picking um, the thousands of residents here across the city of Sheboygan, um, but I do like the idea. Okay, and uh, one second. President Hanna. Thank you. Um, I think you very well may end up with Dave Gass as the representative of the chamber. Okay. That's a good point. Yeah, That'd be my that's guess. That's right. Uh, and Alder Person Kittleson. You Thank right. you, Mr. Chairman. I, I too, I like the idea of two more citizens on, and I, I that was a good suggestion from um, Alderman Gisha, but if Attorney Gass would be on with the chamber, then maybe we wouldn't have to go that way. But two more citizens would be a I think a real good idea. And I want to ask, thank you, Alderperson Kittleson, uh, ask uh, Alderman Gisha. It sounded like your initial s statement was you think the ratio of older persons to citizens might be too high. If one of those three chose, you know, demurred from service, would that make you feel better about the, ra is it the ratio or is it the size of the committee you you're it's, concerned about? Um, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, oops. There you go. I, I think it's just my sense that there's a lot of bureaucrats out here. <laughs> and we're all bureaucrats. I don't mean that in a negative sense. It's just that I think uh, it's nice to have some people on the outside looking in rather than from the inside looking out. I think there's some great input from the county and from the school board because they kind of run similar systems and things like that. But uh, you know, it's a big personal, highly personal change for the citizens in the city. They've been going to the polls. And not that it would, we wouldn't have a mayor of sorts, but it's a big change. And I think. Uh, uh, I think somebody from the outside looking in might be another body or two of that might not be a bad choice. It maybe somebody has recommendations here, neighbors or something like that. that okay, uh, thank it you. Hurt. I don't know how it can hurt. Okay, Alderman Ryan, uh, thank you. Um, I have worked with both um, Eldenburg and David Gass, uh, both in committees as as former Alder when, when Eldon was an Alder person, um, and I think they're both actually an excellent candidates. Uh, for the position. So if that was a motion, I will second that motion uh, to add those two. And while we may end up with them from, with Dave Gass as the chamber member, they can, yeah, they, could look, they, they can look at somebody else, quite yeah, frankly. So but I think I've worked with them both. I know that they're, they're very level-headed. And, and while they may be passionate about their ideas, they're always open to outside ideas as well. So I will second the motion for those two. Two additional citizens, those being Eldenburg and David Gass. For a total of nine. Just trying to keep an eye on them. Right. Um, 
Any other, any other comments on that? Thoughts on the so of it getting up to nine people, orchestrating nine people? No. Uh, does that meet the committee's wish for a broader swath of citizenry? That, what that it adds to two people we've discussed, but then that so that assumes that that opens up to another chamber member, uh, and that. Uh, Alder Person Montemayor. Um, uh, thank you, Chairman. I think I like Alderman Verhasselt's suggestion, rank and file citizen, because David Guest would again be representing the chamber, and Eldon Berg, we already know where he stands on this before we ever start. So I think Alderman Verhasselt's idea of somebody who would be very interested in what happens to the city because they're tax paying residents. And I, do, I have no names. Okay. And, and uh, Alderman Hassel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> again, again, echoing Alderman Montemayor's concern is I, I'm looking at these two and they're, they're great individuals. There's no question about that. But you've got two people who've been politically involved historically and currently and so on. So you bring a similar, in my estimation, you bring a similar perspective of these existing um, committee <clears throat> members here. So again, if there was a way, I mean, one suggestion might be to take whoever is appointed the chair of this committee that they go out and appoint two citizens, take it from that level. Okay, again, and aiming for that rank and file citizen. Okay, okay, thank you. I just want to say that I think the reason the Committee of the Whole is entertaining this and is going to refer it to ourselves as the council is because any mayor, not this mayor, but any mayor doesn't want to be involved in the picking of the people who are going to investigate the, the structure of the office of the mayor. So the mayor uh, believes we're doing him a favor by trying to pick people. I want to be really clear uh, uh, that we, we aren't interested in stacking the deck, at least I'm not, and I don't think this body is interested in stacking the deck. So I, uh, I appreciate all the person for Hasselt and Manta Mayor bringing up the fact that um, there are some that, that, uh, that may already have preconceived notions. The, the purpose of this committee is to hopefully put together a committee that has balance. There may be people who come down on one side, but hopefully then we'll get some who are undecided and they'll have a vigorous examination of the facts. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a suggestion as far as uh, the suggestion to have an attorney on there, whether it's Dave Gass or whoever, I think that's, that's a good idea as far as the city attorney aspect of it, mm -hmm. I think, because I think it would be good to have some attorney on there uh, to discuss corporate counsel versus uh, in-house and, and things like that. Uh, maybe that's certainly up to you, but it uh, might not be a bad idea from that perspective that uh, you have an attorney on that on group. Okay, thank you. That's good insight. And Alderman Ryan. Um, I, I concur with uh, Attorney McLean. It would be good to get an attorney on there. And uh, possibly, you know, we, we have a pretty well-rounded committee right here, I believe. And if we are to add two more individuals, if they could be by recommendation of the uh, chairman of this committee and voted on by the committee. And therefore, it would be impartial. I think that would be the way to round out the committee and, and get the proper people on there. They would still have to come back to us. Do you want to talk about procedurally? Would they have to be referred back to us? Or can we confer the power to appoint to a committee? I, I think uh, under Robert's rules, you could confer the, the power to appoint two additional members to the committee if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, uh, as long as the council you know, votes in favor of that, I don't see why you can't do that. Thank you. I Alderman Gisha. Thank you. If that's the case, and if you have no objection, I'll withdraw my, my uh, amendment. And if my second will withdraw, mm -hmm. withdraw his, and which has been done, that cleans it up at least, yeah. uh, and change it, the amendment to, uh, as has been presented by Alder Person Born, with, uh, with an additional uh, two members to be appointed by committee chair. And two members to be city residents. Yes, as appointed by committee chair. As appointed by the committee or by the committee chair? Does the committee need to vote on these two people? Sure. I think they should. 
I guess, as a committee. It's by a majority vote of Oops. the committee. Steve has a, some input there. Not a legal issue, but just uh, as a practical matter, you know, the more, if you have the committee doing this, that's going to be one or two extra meetings. Yeah. And if you want to get this committee up and going and a report done, you may want to just have the council appoint all the members. Otherwise, uh, it down. Uh, it slows it down. Time is time passes by pretty quickly. You mean the chair appointed? The committee. The committee chair could just appoint well, two, and that wouldn't bog anybody up. Well, I don't know. If I were the chair, I'd probably want to consult with the committee. But you could do that. I think you may want to just have the council appoint all the members. Thank you, Attorney McLean. How, how, you know, we said just a few minutes ago that suddenly the timeline wasn't as important to us because of the length, or is that not what we were saying? We still want that report. Uh, Alderman Bourne's initial, um, initial amendment is to have them have something concrete or a report for us by mid-March. Um, Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> just to clarify, Jim McLean, the chairman could come in in the second meeting with his two selections, could he not, and, and ask for a vote at that meeting? And irrespective of that, the discussion could start in meeting number one without those two people, and they could pick up in the second meeting, those two citizens? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, that's possible. Okay. So I think there wouldn't be a ton lost there. Again, the discussion could start meeting number one, and the two citizens, whoever those two might be, would just have to pick up the pace, read the minutes and so on, and catch up. That would mean you, I'm not sure if your resolution here calls for you designating who the chair is, but if it doesn't, then you've got to first meet, pick a chair, and then have that chair pick other members. Uh, but yeah, you could do that. Um, Alderperson Montemayor, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think as Alderman Rinfleisch said, by March 16th, we will have some sort of a report. Mm -hmm. And they may or may not feel that it's complete, but they will have a report. Thank you, Alderman Montemar. And that's, what I, that's the feeling I got was once, once, Steve, once Attorney McLean pointed out the fact that none of this matters for another two years anyway, the learning, we want to keep the learning on pace, but the, the, the criticality of week by week maybe is not quite as important anymore. Is that? Exactly. Okay. Uh, Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you. I'll actually echo Alderman Montemayor. Um, I still would like to have a report by March 16th mm -hmm. uh, ready f for this body to hear. While it may not be complete or not complete, um, there will be information presented that we can decide. Do we continue on with the committee? Do we not continue on with the meeting? At least then there's a, a date line that we can see what information have, have we gathered and, and are we on the right path or are we not on the right path? Okay. Uh, and then the council can decide what to do. Either this council or the next sitting council uh, can decide what to do beyond that. Uh, so I think time is of the essence, at least for the initial report. But uh, as McLean, uh, Attorney McLean had mentioned that, um, you know, we, the earliest we could do anything with, with at least his position is two years and four years for the position of mayor. So um, um, now I think time is not as much of the essence for, for the full detailed report. So I think, you know, if, if we wanted to hurry it on, I would say this, this committee should or the council should actually appoint which person should be the chairperson. So from day one, we know who chairs. So you don't have to do an election. And if anybody has names right now, we can, you know, pick, uh, at least put them up down there, approve them based on their acceptance of it, uh, and go and do that if we wanted to have everything done by March 16th. However, seeing as we don't need that, I would say let the committee do its work, and at least it can be impartial. They elect their own chairperson. They can, uh, the chairperson can appoint two. It may take some time frame, but at least we'll have some report by March 16th, one way or the other. Okay. Uh, a question for Attorney McLean, I guess. Someone had mentioned, regardless of who wins the office of the mayor, um, so we don't have a face in that seat, could this body alter the duties of that person um, so that this structure, is that even, is that even possible? Because somebody told me it was, and I, that sounded shady to me. I, I think once uh, the uh, mayoral position has been elected, I think their, uh, their term is four years. I, I don't think you can really change their duties during the term. During the I term. think you could, you okay, know, that, obviously that's... after the term, but uh, uh, you know, unless that, that person unilaterally agreed to resign or something as mayor under that scenario. As originally defined. And, and uh, 
agreed to allow some other scenario to take place, but I think uh, absent something like that, uh, you elect a, a mayor for a four-year term. His duties are to act as mayor based on uh, the duties that have been provided to him. Okay, thank you. That's what I thought sounded right, but someone was sure it wasn't and wanted clarification on that. Okay, so that certainly removes the time uh, constraint. All the person month of mayor. Thank you. It's me again. No, please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, of these seven people, or seven areas, uh, spe three specific people, and then um, Mr. Jerry Jones, four specific people, and then unknowns, I would bet in that group of seven people, they're going to know two wonderful citizens that should be added that we have no idea I even exist. Exactly. I think so. Yeah. And that they'll convene on that informally before they meet, Absolutely. maybe even before they meet. I think that's a great idea. Thank you. Hey, oh, Citizen Montemayor, did you have a question? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't <laughs> selecting him for appointment. Please. <laughs> if elected, you will not serve. <laughs> that uh, this kind of happened about three years ago, where I think it was Alderman, Alderman Ellen Berg uh, charged the Board of Park and Forestry to come up with a dog study committee. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> I purposely, I always happened to be the chair of that, that, of that board, and I, I came up with, I mean, I came up with, the, with the, the committee, left myself off the committee on purpose because I'm not a dog owner, but I named two citizens at large, that had to come back to the council for verification, okay? The council still had to vote on those two citizens. The three board members were okay, but those two citizens had to come through the council to get verified, okay? So we just have to be consistent with this. So I just want to make sure, Attorney McLean, I think what I heard Attorney McLean say, though, is if we specifically designate that committee the power to appoint, then it doesn't have to come back to us. And as long as he's comfortable with that and we're comfortable with that, is that? Okay. Aren't you still the chair of the dog committee? Pardon me? I, did we ever leave you of the dog committee chairman, Jeff? Isn't that, isn't that part of it? <laughs> Thank you, uh, Citizen Montemayor. Okay, so if there's no more discussion, I think what we're about to vote on is a date timeline on Alderman Boren's amendment, which is that they would report to us by March 16th. 16th. Committee the whole meeting uh, soon thereafter uh, with a recommendation for the com council to vote on on April 6th. So one thing we're voting on is that timeline. Mm -hmm. The second thing we're voting on is an appointment of the people on the list in front of you, which would be um, all the person. 40 item. Yeah. Yep. And, and that's Heidemann, Reinfleisch, Vanderweel, um, a city resident from the chamber, a city resident from the school board, a city resident uh, from the county board. Uh, Mr. Jerry Jones, a city resident banker, and two members, city residents, as appointed by a majority vote of the committee. Uh, clarification. Uh, you said a Sheboygan Area School Board member, which is correct, but in your memo here you say a member of the Sheboygan Area School District. Ah. Uh, I think you want to say a board member of the Sheboygan Area School, school Board. District. Yes, a board member of the Sheboygan Area School District who is also a city resident, Correct. okay? So those are the two, thi two things. Oh, and then the third element is of the original document, 1640, to change and a corporate council versus a city attorney, to change that phrase to and a contracted outside council versus an elected city attorney. Those are the three changes we are Voting on. And you're empowering the committee to appoint two citizens at large. By the paragraph, and two members, city residents, as appointed by a majority vote of the committee. Does that meet your test, uh, Attorney McLean? Is that sufficient? I believe so. And uh, it'll be helpful. I assume by the next council meeting, this will be in, in writing. writing. Yes, this document will come back All amended. All the board has agreed to craft that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so those are the three changes. Is there any more discussion or any more clarification on the, the things that we will be changing? Okay, then with that, I'll ask uh, 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 Alderman Hanna to call the roll. 
Warren. Aye. Bauk. I'll abstain. Decker. Aye. Gesha. Aye. Hannah votes aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemore. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhassel. Twelve eyes, one abstain. Motion, Motion passes. as amended, uh, that recommendation to ourselves <clears throat> passes. Um, I will, uh, um, I told City Clerk uh, Sue that I would get her this information tonight so that it can get in time for our next packet because tonight's the cutoff. So I'll send her some of this information tonight. Attorney McLean. Uh, just procedural question. I guess I would see that as approving the amendments to the document, then you, ah. you would want to act on another document that, or another motion of approving the you ready resolution. For that? Thank you. Uh, so having approved the amendment, the three amendments that we just approved, now uh, we will open it up for continued discussion on the document as a whole. Is there any further discussion on the document as amended? Okay, then we'll move to a, a further vote on approving the, the, a recommendation to ourselves as a council as amended. Yeah, we need a motion. We had that already to be discussing it, didn't we? To get to the uh, amendment. The original motion was was born in yourself. Yes. Okay, to, as amended. Mo uh, move to approve as amended. Second by Alderman Hansel. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Uh, voice vote, okay. please. Alderman. Born. Aye. Bauk. I'll abstain again. Decker. Aye. Gesha. Aye. Hannah votes aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemore. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, one, two. Twelve eyes, one abstain. Passes. Very good. That recommendation uh, will be forwarded. Item seven, uh, just a discussion about possible future uh, topics. Uh, the, the city's outside labor attorneys are prepared to talk to us in closed session about uh, the city labor contracts that will come up in 2009. And they want to have that discussion with us as early as possible so we can begin thinking about how that affects the various committees and what our strategy should be for 09. That's one possible topic, and you see some of the others listed there. Is there a preference among this body what our uh, January topic should be? Yeah. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the City County Shared Services Committee is going to be meeting in early January. I forgot the exact date uh, on, on the... Uh, for further information and recommendation on uh, countywide dispatch. So I think somewhere early in 2009, providing the, the uh, City County Shared Services Committee votes to go uh, at least move further with the combined dispatch, that we should probably have the report from the ad hoc committee on what the recommendation is. And so Mr. maybe Mr. Maples from the chairperson of that committee would want to come in and do a presentation for all the council at a committee of the whole. And I think that should be in early in 09. So perhaps, a, does the committee prefer the labor contracts, get that knowledge, get smart on that in January, and then we'll call the February meeting to be um, shared services? Uh, Alderman Gisha. Uh, thank you, uh, President Bach. Did you say that you had discussions and the attorneys and those folks are, have been alerted and they want to uh, engage us with Susan this? Hart has told me that they're ready to engage okay, us and they want you. to come in. Yep, I don't, I have no idea what they're going to say, but she just said they're ready and anxious to tell us so we can, as a body and a bunch of committees, can be planning <clears throat> what that means for our early 09 steps. I just, wanted, I just misunderstood. Okay, and Alderman Member Hassel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just to fly the flag a little bit for 7B, uh, we are without a pay plan at the very moment, and the reviews generally work from July through July, so there is a bit of urgency there as well. I mean, I, obviously those are big issues, and we have to tackle that labor contract early and often, but I just wanted to point out that we don't have to the end of the year, technically speaking. Okay. 
So, and we don't have to keep it to one a month. You know, we, we do that as, as it's comfortable, but if things become pressing, and I think uh, Alderman Hassel brings up a, a good point. We said that when we approved the pay raise for 09, uh, that we needed to get hot on or get busy on uh, determining what the next pay plan should be. And there is a document waiting for you, so. Okay. So it's something we can act on. So, so what I think I hear you saying is contracts first, shared services second, pay plan, uh, and then I bet during one of those we could probably work in 15 or 20 minutes for all the person clients to talk about before, uh, you know, while global warming has us in its grips right now, um, we will uh, give her a chance to talk about will, that. Will Alderman Gish be joining her in that presentation? I will not, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any, uh, any other business? Uh, Alderman Gish. Uh, regarding the pay plan thing, um, hopefully by that time, because it looks to me like our... Um, our uh, committee, our hiring committee, Civil Service Commission, seems to be kind of hot on the trail of interviews with Human Resources Director. If we do that in March, maybe we can have an opportunity for mm -hmm. input from the person from who's actually going to have to implement it. Great. Any other thoughts? Okay. Entertain a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Good night. Thanks, everybody.